So thank you so much for allowing me to come here and share some of my thoughts on, on Prop 16. Um, allow me to just begin really quick and give you a little context of where my perspective comes from. I am a daughter of immigrant parents from Mexico. And I wanted to mention that because I had the opportunity to live with my grandparents in Mexico, in the state of Yucatan, um, city of Merida. And um, one of the most amazing and transformative experiences that I had, um, it was living with my grandmother. My grandmother was a self-taught woman who believed in higher education. And just to give you a little background on her, she um, was a lifelong learner who at the age of eight, third grade, was actually um, removed from school for, from, from her formal education by her father, my great-grandfather, who believed that she, um, her expectation was to be a wife and a mother and therefore did not have a need to pursue her formal education. Now, this was devastating for my grandmother who absolutely loved, loved to learn. But that did not, that did not prohibit her from continuing to learn. She, like I said, she would read her newspaper every day, anything that had to do with culture and the heritage in her history of her state and her country. She was an advocate of just a voracious reader. And um, lo and behold, here we had the opportunity to come and live with her in Mexico, different stages in our, in, when we were young. And her thing, especially after my parents' divorce, was that you know, her, her, her thought was, as a woman, you need to pursue your education, your formal education, because um, mind you, my grandmother, who's 88 now, um, believed that if anything were to happen to our husbands, we needed a dignified and respectful way of um, supporting ourselves. So, and the empowered of women. So having that mindset, um, both my sister and I who were together, we, uh, we pursued our education. We knew it wasn't whether or not, you know, if we went to college, it was finished elementary school, junior high, high school, and you went on to um, your university um, studies. Therefore, that's what we did. It was just something that we did. It was expected. Um, but that, of course, gave the foundation to, um, you know, my mindset as a mother. I have three children, two daughters. Um, my oldest will be turning 21 in a couple of just under two weeks. And she just returned from serving a church mission out in Texas um, after having two years to term, or actually having studying two terms at, at her college and um, just returned back in, in July. My second daughter just graduated um, from her high school as a scholar athlete, valedictorian of her class with a 4.75 GPA. I want you to think about the opportunities that my daughters have had. Um, and I do have my youngest son who's 14 entering high school and bless his heart, he is just as witty and just as smart as his sisters and has quite the bar to, to meet up with, with them because they have set such a high standard for him. But what I wanna share with you is that I'm firstborn generation here, firstborn. My daughters have accomplished so much in just being the second generation being born. Opportunities have abounded for my girls, they have never felt, or I have never felt any um, compromise or limitations in our ability to thrive. The opportunities have always been there. As long as we had a mindset that education was the key to success and to be able to grow um, and fulfill our, our skills and talents or be able to, to um, nurture them and, and develop them. But I am concerned, um, you know, uh, so let me back up a little bit. So that's a little bit of a context of where I'm coming from and my perspective as far as opportunity here in, in California and the States in comparison to some of the limitations that, you know, the generation of my grandmother had in, in Mexico. So I look at what we have as an opportunity perspective, right? And um, with no barriers, especially with, with girls, um, always advancing. Now, as a former teacher of English language learners and also having volunteered different capacities while my children were going through school, we've had many, many opportunities in our school district um, to really have um, provide programs to uh, incentivize and encourage our young girls to pursue their education, especially in the areas of um, STEAM education, um, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, or just math, depending on, on the school. 
but we are do we have so much right now in place to help our young girls go into fields of education that would normally not be the case um, because of their natural tendencies to want different um, di other other career opportunities and I mentioned that because in education we do have a vast majority of women who come into um, education because of different factors, whether it's the fact that we have a, a desire to teach and nurture um, kids, an innate tendency towards that, or if it's um, the, the ability to have flexibility in our schedules, we're at work while our children are at, at, at school, and then we're able to have our vacation time with, along with our kids. You know, whatever it may be, there's different factors that um, allow or, or provide for women to come into education um, and, and you know, pursue that, that type of degrees, which um, brings me to the um, a little study that we had from the American, the American Enterprise Institute. There was an article that I read and I just wanted to just touch up a little bit on that, uh, on that end. And it was in regards to um, a prediction that um, no college graduation speaker will mention the 20, oh, let me just, Go into the, I'm sorry, really quick. In um, addressing the fact that we have um, in 2018, which is the year that my oldest daughter graduated, um, we had, um, let's see, that it would be a good time, let's see, to, to oh, geez, let me figure this out. Okay. Based on the Department of Education estimates, women will earn a disproportionate share of college degrees at every level of higher education in 2018 for the 12th straight year since 2007, when women first earned a majority of doctoral degrees. Overall, women in the class of 2018 will earn 141 college degrees at all levels for every 100 men, and there will be a 663,000 college degree gap up from 659,000 from last year in favor of women for this year's college graduates. We're having a, a large number of women that are actually graduating, pursuing higher education and graduating than we have men. As a mother of a, three, two daughters and a son, I'm really concerned about the fact that we're not talking about the, um, the gap that we have for male graduates. I have raised my children to to pursue education and be driven and have disciplined with, with no regards to looking at themselves as being disadvantaged. We don't have that perspective. I didn't transfer that to my children. They are continuing to excel and do incredibly well. But I am concerned that um, we are having a gap in, 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 in gender, if you want to put that way, on the other side for males. And that's a concern that we, we should be discussing more so than trying to instill a, a mindset that, that we have to create a system that shows preferential treatment for women. When in reality, I think we're doing really, really well for women. And as a mom of both girls and a boy, I'm concerned about where our mindset we are as a society, especially with the behavioral health issues that we have in our society and culturally, as well as um, um, the social emotional uh, context of where we are as a culture. Um, the idea and the notion that we need to show preferential treatment, I think it's conducive to um, the opposite of what we want to um, foster and encourage in our society. Um, with that in mind, I wanted to show or actually express one more thing from a mother's perspective. I don't want to take too much time, but one last point. As a mother in our home, as a parent in our home with children, we create systems where we want to have um, our children develop their talents, their skills in, an, in, a, in a way that's equal to all of them. And we all understand and have heard stories where when we show preferential treatment for one child over another child based on X, Y, and Z, or one, two, and three, we need to understand what that does to the culture of the home. And the system that works at home in that, in, in that environment is one that's conducive to animosity and resentment and Ill, Ill will as far and ill emotion. 
And that's very concerning to me, and it should be to us as a society, because what we have, what we have in the systems that we have um, in our society and our culture should be one of equal opportunity. And right now, as far as education goes, we have lots of equal opportunities. We cannot confuse the ability to have equal opportunity and access to education, which we have right now, to having equal outcomes. Because as we know as parents, every child has different drives and different personalities that may or may not, at that point in time, fulfill their, their, um, their potential. So we have um, opportunities that are bound in education. If children are not succeeding, we need to look as to why and really focus on the quality of teachers and quality of, of um, uh, professors um, versus, okay, do we have a certain number of, of X, Y, and Z or one, two, and three, in my opinion, um, in my humble opinion, um, because it's just, it's not conducive to the overall well-being of our, of our community. The last thing we need right now is to create a system that's going to continuously try to um, uh, continue to focus on gender, focus on um, race, the color of your skin, ethnicity, or national backgrounds. We need to focus on merits, on our accomplishments, on our character, versus on things that we really don't have control over. Um, and that's just my humble opinion.